Blog Talk Radio. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Money and More Network, where we talk about your success in whatever form that is for you. My name is Wendy Casera, and I'm your hostess of this show. I am the proud owner of Tax Expectations. We are a bookkeeping, accounting, and taxes firm because all roads lead to taxes. You can find us on the web at taxpectations.com, and you can find us on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and all those other wonderful um, social media sites. I um, wanted to share some, some interesting news. I just got a new postcard made up that I'm going to be sending out to the masses so you may get one in the mail. Um, but I'm also handing them out at networking events and such, and I really like it was, it's just something that I'm, I'm hoping will pique some interest, so I'd love to hear from you what you think about it. Uh, it says, did you know that an average of $4 billion a year in tax deductions are never claimed because most business owners do not know they are qualified for them? Did you know that the majority of errors are due to self-prepared returns? Did you know there are simple ways to do your bookkeeping that can be done in less than one hour a week? Imagine if there were a way that you could spend your time on your business and doing what you love instead of bookkeeping and worrying about your taxes. Let tax expectations help you overcome your money roadblocks and stop, start realizing your business dreams. Pretty awesome. It's pretty got green and money pictures and my little logo and little green and tan and just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It's pretty exciting. So um, that was nice. I got that done. Got that done um, by a wonderful lady named Chris, and she is with International Minuteman Press, I believe, up here in Charlotte. Um, fabulous job, very easy to work with. Um, yeah, International Minute Press, not Minuteman. International Minute Press um, at ConcordIMP.com. Really easy to work with. Real and expensive. Very, very. Um, uh, detail-oriented, um, very professional-looking. So use that service. Um, and as stated, we're having our website redone, and that's going to be done by the lovely Jennifer Duft. Um, I am really super excited about that. Um, she started working on some security issues because one of the big things, of course, is that I want people to be able to send their information over to us without any worries whatsoever, and that includes um, making sure that the website submission, because people go on there and put their information in. Also, so that you can make sure that you don't get any kind of um, spam emails and the like from me. So she's working on that, and I'm really excited about it. She's a wonderful, wonderful girl um, with a nice business, and um, I think everybody's going to be really excited when they see it, because... I know I'm going to be excited, and that's the most important part, right, 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 right. So anyhow, um, so that's some of the things we have going here. But today, we are going to be talking about taxes. Now, there's a big shock on it, because that's what we do. But today, I decided to focus on sales and use tax. Um, it's becoming quite a very big issue in the world because of, you know, life-changing technology becoming more prevalent people sitting down at their desk and ordering online, all the ways that it affects the sales and use tax. And um, Accounting Today put out a really good article about it. And in a bit, I'm going to probably give you most of that article because um, the gentleman who wrote that, Dave McClure, um, did a really fabulous job. And it's really, really important to everybody, not just business owners, individuals as well. But of course, business owners are going to be um, struck with it a little bit harder. But first, before we get started, we always use some motivational quotes. So I decided um, I was looking around on the Internet, and I found one, and it says three simple rules. Number one, if you do not go after what you want, you'll never have it. Number two, if you do not ask, the answer will always be no. And number three, if you do not step forward, you will always be in the same place. And I really like seeing that this morning. I needed to hear that. So I decided you needed to hear it as well. Um, I have used number two lots of times. If you don't ask, the answer will always be no. Um, people can say no when you ask them a question, and then you know the answer. 
But the regret comes when you don't ask the question. You never know whether or not it's going to happen or if they would have ever said yes. Um, I was talking to a lady this last week at a meeting, and she had gone to um, one, I, I think it was Tony Robbins seminars, and um, there were some pretty big speakers at this at this um, seminar. And one of the girls she was sitting with does a podcast and a radio show much like mine. And she was sitting there going to my friend and saying, oh, I'd love to have some of those people as guests on my show. And um, she said, you know, I'm just going to do it. She got up and she asked, and all three people that she asked said, yes, they'd love to. And if that woman had sat in that chair and said, oh, well, they're too big. They're not going to want to do stuff for me. Um, I'm not going to bother them, et cetera. She would have never got them. And now she's got three nationally and internationally known speakers to be guests on her radio show. So guess what? Yes, I'm going to be doing that too. But I thought it was kind of really super cool. Um, and then, of course, we have Steve Jobs quotes. The only way to do great work is to love what you do. And I love that because I love what I do. I love talking to people about taxes. I love helping them with their bookkeeping and helping them in general um, save themselves money on their taxes. Um, so what we talk about sales and use tax, and what I'm finding is that a lot of people don't understand what use tax is. Now, um, use tax, for the most part, has been kind of one of those silent taxes. People have just been ignoring it, um, not paying much attention to it, and not paying it um, pretty much. And um, as you're going to see from some of the information we're going to provide today, that the states are getting a lot more picky, so they're going to start really going after people. When you got your tax return done this year, if it was done on an automated software of any kind, um, the question was asked, did you have any out-of-state purchases that you need to pay tax on? And so many people... Um, just click that button, no, and go on about their day. Um, but as stated, um, it is really one thing that is going to need to be um, taken care of and done and paid attention to. So what is use tax? Um, use tax is a type of tax imposed on both businesses and individuals. Generally, you are supposed to pay use tax if you purchase an item without paying your home state sales tax and you use, give away, store, or consume that item in your home state, okay? So use tax is for stuff you pay no tax on if you buy it somewhere else, especially. Um, and somewhere else means the Internet, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, it is sales tax and Stuff that you use, give away, store, or consume that item in your home state. Not just in your home, because business has to do that as well. So if you bought something in another state and you bring that in that item into your home state, you're required to pay use tax. You buy something from someone who is not authorized to collect sales tax. Um, for example, you buy furniture from an individual through a Craigslist or a newspaper ad you are required to pay use tax on that. You purchase an item by subscription through the internet or from a mail order catalog without being charged sales tax, required to pay use tax. Um, if you buy personal property like furniture or um, uh, appliances and stuff with the purchase of real estate, you should be paying use tax. If you distribute property within a state for promotional purposes. For example, you send a catalog into a state, then you should be um, paying use tax. So uh, that's just a general um, description of what use tax is because we're going to be talking about sales and use tax here um, during our discussion. And as I stated, um, uh, part of what we're going to be using is this article by Dave McClure from accounting today because it was really, really super cool. He talks a lot about technology and the way that technology needs to catch up with it, but he had some other really good things to say to say about it. And, you know, one of the reasons that this is so important is the fact that so many states are looking to expand their revenue base. Um, sales tax accounts for about 30% of every state's budget, and right now the states are hurting for revenue. 
when you're going on and you're buying stuff from Amazon and you're not going down to the local store and buying it and paying sales tax, it hurts the state. And what is happening is the states are um, getting out. Their budget is not, uh, they're expecting that much revenue and they're not getting that much revenue. So they're uh, resorting to drastic measures to get some of that. And one of the things they're going to be doing is really, really cracking down on sales and use tax, making sure that it's taken care of. Um, the problem being is that the sales and use tax is an incredibly complex tax. There's thousands of U.S. tax jurisdictions and hundreds of tax rate changes each year. Um, and now we're talking about on a federal level um, that the tax rate rates changes. I, I've told you before on my show, one and a half tax law changes per day on average for income tax laws and those other kind of tax laws, but those are all federal, the all change laws as well. And sometimes the states are changing more laws than the federal government are. And uh, with all the stuff going on with the sales and use tax, they're really picking it up and, and putting their foot down. Um, they're, they're stating that over the last five years, there's a broad new activities that is that are creating issues in the tax jurisdiction new tax authorities imposing sales and use tax, and a gradual expansion of goods and services subject to use tax. Um, the, the problem is that sales tax codes have become outdated and are, are leading to bad tax base. Um, so that's why there's such an onslaught of tax code changes. And the states themselves are struggling to keep up with um, the different economies that are occurring. You have service economies, you have digital economies, as well as your brick and mortar stores. And they have to keep up with that and how are they going to account for that? And it's it's come it's become quite a, a problem for a lot of these who are already underfunded and under budget and um, under revenue. So the issue is that the state revenue departments are hiring auditors and they're now chasing down smaller and smaller businesses looking for missed revenue opportunities. They know you don't have a lot of money to go out there and fight. So they're chasing down every single dollar that they get. And trust me, I probably spend a good quarter to a third of my time um, chasing down sales and use tax reports, um, dealing with state agencies that have issues with them. Um, withholding is coming in as a close second for state agencies. They're looking for every single penny they can get. I had a lady um, who had a cleaning service, and she got um, charged with a uh, audit for use tax. And they went back three years, because that's as far back as they can go with three years, and they audited every single transaction she had in her QuickBooks file. Um, and so the things that she bought at Amazon and eBay and all of that were counted. But there were also a couple online stores that she um, had purchased stuff from. That was included, as well as some of the places that she gets some of her cleaning supplies and uniforms and things like that that had not charged her sales tax. All of those things were included in the use tax. And they not only charge you for that use tax, but they will go back and they will charge you for penalties and interest for not having paid it at that point. So it's really an important thing to keep up with, and they're really, really starting to really crack down on it. You know, these these sales tax laws were based on a system of a physical sale. Um, so you walk into a store and you purchase something, and the sales tax, when the codes were written, were based on, on paying sales tax in that state and in that county based on what you bought in the store. And... Um, so it's really requiring the states to work on the number of transactions that don't even involve an exchange of physical property um, and, uh, of course, all the digital sales as well. I mean, look at now we're buying music. We don't go to a record store and buy a record. Um, we are buying music over the Internet and downloading an app on our phone. And, you know, it just makes it difficult. Now, a lot of states have enacted what they're calling the Amazon tax law, and currently there are 16 states that have adopted that. Um, and basically what's happening is places like Amazon, um, for instance, if your state is covered, Amazon will send you a statement that says this is how much money you've spent this year 
and you have to include that on your use tax. Some states have not done that yet, and people aren't so worried about it. But I can guarantee you that it is going to increase. So it's really something you need to pay a lot of attention to. Um, all your out-of-state purchases, so keep track of it. Even if you're just a person and you're buying a book off of Amazon, you need to pay attention to that, what you're spending because that is going to is subject to use tax, and they're going to really start cracking down on it. Um, services also. Services have traditionally been exempt from sales tax. And right now, a lot of states are reconsidering whether or not they want to add the sales tax to service businesses. Now, of course, um, as this article states, this guy was, you know, right on point. The larger service industries are going to use their strength to lobby out of sales tax. But the smaller services will be increasingly taxed. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what comes out in the wash, and and I believe that it's going to be an ongoing thing, and it's just going to get more and more tight. So uh, really, something that um, needs a lot of attention. Um, all states are really ramping up their efforts to collect on this use state this use tax. Um, some states have created. Um, what is they call a safe harbor amount based on your income. So when your income tax is done, they say, okay, well, this is how much money you made. So you're just going to play this, pay this flat rate sales and use tax amount, um, and that's going to cover it all. Others are looking towards a national solution. They want the United States government to come up with a solution and it be kind of across the board. Um, there is a also a streamlined sales and use tax agreement that had become effective in October 2000. It was a nationwide thing, and 24 states have signed the agreement. Among those, Georgia, North Carolina, Washington, the District of Columbia, um, and Tennessee, some of the others. I name those because I have clients in those states um, that may be paying attention. And uh, But there are 24 total states that have already signed that. Um, so... People are stating that there's going to be an increased reliance on sales tax uh, becoming a U.S. Uh, national tax issue that the national tax authorities are going to have to become involved in. They really want a greater uniformity across the, st the state, uh, all the states, because, you know, as it is, uh, there are so many different state laws. Um, as far as sales and use tax, income tax as well, but state and use, sales and use tax is even more complex because not only do you have it on the state level, a lot of them have it on the county level, um, some have city levels, some have uh, local taxes based on um, projects or school tax or whatever else it is. So there is so much um, to take in consideration and so many differences that it's it's becoming quite um, a, a hodgepodge. And I really think that this is one thing that is going to be up and coming in the forefront of all the tax issues as we go along. Now, um, this article, as I talked about, um, he had a lot to say about technology. And um, I wanted to bring that up because technology has to play an increasing role um, in how effectively the states are going to be able to collect the sales and use tax. Right now, as it stands, most states, you still have a paper filing. You have a monthly return that's due on the 20th of the month, and you mail your check to the appropriate revenue authority, and you need to make sure all your invoices have been calculated correctly, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it also involves fire, filing an exempt certificate for you if that's something that you have, um, and the preparations for the inevitable audits by the state and local authorities. The manual pro process is insufficient, and it's wrought with a lot of errors, and it costs people a lot of money. Um, it's going to become more and more important that a nationwide technology some sort of electronic solution comes into play. Now, some states have, like, for instance, let's go to South Carolina. South Carolina, you can go ahead and pay your state sales and use tax online, okay? 
It asks if you have any local, and that's when you can put in your county stuff if there's there. But, for instance, um, I work a lot with Horry County, South Carolina, um, Myrtle Beach. I have clients, several clients there. Um, if you are do doing anything with the food and beverage or accommodations industry, you then have to pay, pay, um, fill out an additional paper form that has to be um, calculated and paid separately from the state and the county. The state and the county you can pay online, and it will be an auto draft from your bank account. But citywide or countywide um, food and accommodations, prepared foods and accommodations form, has to be done by paper, has to be added up and sent in with a check, and it has to be postmarked by the 20th. And let me tell you that a lot of people get fined for it being a day or two late. So um, technology automating state sales and use tax is going to become very, very important. Um, the more complex they get, the more audits they have, the more paper that they use, the more issues that it creates. And it costs them a lot of money as well. I mean, like I said, I'm on with these state agencies all the time. These people have to figure out what they're doing. They have to call someone like myself or the client up and go over things four, five, six times, getting everything right and back to them. So it costs the state money, but they got to have their money. And, the, and as stated earlier in the call, um, going after these Smaller businesses is really what they're doing a lot of. So they are working on technical, um, more better technical solutions, technology, not technical, technological solutions to come up with um, because it's just, it's getting more and more complex. I mean, you know, we talked about Amazon. You're downloading an app for a, a music. So now you have more complexity because not only are where was the product perched, but where's purchased, where was the product purchased, but where is the mobile device at the time that the purchase occurred? You know, all these little things they don't think about and people don't think about. And it's really, really important and it's going to get even more complex. So it's. I think it's going to be something that's going to be popping up in the news. And I'd be really surprised. I mean, I haven't heard it so much because I don't pay as much attention to all the political foo for all as I probably should. But I'd be surprised if um, that doesn't come up at some point as one of the campaign, um, um, somebody in their campaign brings up the fact that they've got, you know, quite a solution for it. Um, the funny thing is, is, is it might just not because, um, it is that complex that, you know, going up and saying you have a solution or you want to work on finding a solution could be a little bit, you know, a little bit more than you want to handle. So that's our sales and use tax little summary for the day. Um, just keep in mind, you know, it's really, really important. You have to keep track of your use tax. You have to make sure that um, the other thing is for business owners, make sure yourself don't give them any extra money. You work hard for that money. Um, being even one day late can be penalties paid. And a lot of states, like for instance, I used South Carolina earlier, if you pay your sales and use tax early, they even give you a discount. Um, so save yourself some money if you can and get that done. And keep in mind that it is a crime to not pay your sales tax because it's considered fraud because, you know, not that not paying any of your taxes is bad, but um, it is federal fraud to not pay your sales, and, uh, sales tax because you've already collected that money from other people and it's the same as stealing. You're stealing their money and you're not paying it back to the state, which is where it belongs. You've collected that money for that specific purpose. So it needs to be paid to the state. So please keep on top of that. So on to bigger and better and other things. Um, we have other things going on in the world of taxes always and I attempt to keep you as, as on top of it as I possibly can. Um, I saw another uh, nice article this week on taxes on Social Security. Um, if if a, somebody is receiving Social Security and that's the only thing they're receiving in Social Security, chances are they probably aren't going to be taxed. But if they have income coming from other sources like an IRA or 401k or something like that, they're probably going to be taxed. 
If the Social Security benefit is $25,000 for single individuals or reaches $32,000 for married filing jointly, then the income is subject to, to tax depending upon the amount. Um, one of the things that I encourage my clients to do, if you have a traditional IRA or a 401k, um, it's worth thinking about converting that to a Roth IRA because that will lessen your tax base as well. And really, really big, important, avoid contributing to your IRA, IRA or 401k beyond the set limits as you could face IRS penalties and double taxation on your contribution. So make sure that when you're um, contributing that you only contribute up to the amount of the limit. Because um, then you could pay penalties. Don't give the money away. Also, tax court reminds you that you should never toy around with your retirement account. Court rulings show that clients need to avoid tapping their retirement accounts, their IRAs, their 401ks, their annuities to finance a business endeavor or personal plan. Such a move will result in hefty taxes and penalties. Dun, dun, dun. We've been warned by tax court. Don't do it. Don't go there. Ah. Oh. Anyhow, um, so I thought I would share that a little bit with you. We have some other things going on. Um, I wanted to talk about, oh, you know, it's getting time. So we're going to save that for another day. We're running out of time today. So I wanted to, I know I haven't in the last couple of weeks, so I wanted to make sure that you, you got your, um, you know, your fix of the happy song because as we know, we always want to be happy when we're talking about our money. So let's go happy. Might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Because I'm happy, because I like what I do, and I hope you do too. Um, we're going to close now. Um, I hope that you all have a wonderful day, morning, afternoon, evening, weekend, or whatever time that it is that you are listening to my show. Keep in mind that you can always go back and listen to old shows, so you can take good notes and understand what's going on. And as always, um, you are more than welcome to. I implore you to call for a consultation. Um, we are doing 20-minute free consultations and setting appointments for either a longer consultation or to sit down and show you what we can do for you or how we can help. Um, I see a lot of my clients struggling to understand tax laws and all the intricacies that go along with it, which is why I do what I do. And um, being able to sit down with them helps them most often to save money on their tax returns. I was really excited last week, $10,000 one client. We got a $10,000 savings on her tax return. Um, tax liability just by doing a review and um, tweaking a few things. So if you want to save thousands on your taxes, give tax expectations a call, and we will sit down and talk to you. Until then, you have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.